Hello everyone, Kevin Stevenson here with GetMeTheGeek.com and today we're going to talk about upgrading our Proxmox 6 to a 7 version. That's right, 7.0 has been out for a while and actually we're up to 7.1, but I've got a 6.4 version of Proxmox that I'm going to upgrade to the latest and greatest version and we're going to do that right now. Let's get started. All right, here we go. Boom. Here we are. So first off, Proxmox does a really great job of providing documentation to do this operation. So go to their website, go to their wiki, upgrading from 6x to 7. And there's a step-by-step -step guide. However, uh, this video will give you a hands-on look at how, how we do it. And I'll probably have a blog post on my website too after the fact. So let's get started. First off, let's just take a look here. When you're at the website, go ahead and take a look at this URL. If you just Google upgrading Proxmox from 6 to 7, you'll get there. Um, first things first, introduction. we got a table of contents. We come down here, and it talks about how 7 has new features. I haven't done a video on what's great, new and great in 7.0. However, one thing I will tell you that we are upgrading from Buster to Bullseye. Uh, as far as the Debian underpinnings are concerned. So it's a whole distro upgrade and it is awesome. So one of the things that I'm excited about it and one of the reasons why I finally just got around to doing this for this machine is now in 7.1, there is virtual TPMs. So I'm gonna see if I can get that going so I can have a virtual Windows 11 machine. Ha <laughs> ha, who's excited about that? All right, so scrolling through here, you just follow the operations. The first thing you want to do, honestly, is make sure your Proxmox is up to date. So you can do that one of two ways. Here's a Proxmox, here's a virtual machine. So two things to remember, keep in mind. Number one, make sure that whatever virtual machines you have on this are backed up in case something goes south on you. So. The other thing is it probably goes faster if you can turn off those virtual machines. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to shut these guys down. Shut down, boom, and shut down, boom. So these are both non-production machines. This is this is one of my environments that I have that's up and running, and it's just uh, I kind of use it for some test purposes. So no big deal to shut these guys down, and those are both shut down. The other thing you want to do is go for update. So you can hit refresh, hit upgrade right here like this. And so here's a bunch of packages that are not up to date that will be updated. Uh, you can do this through the GUI. However, my prefer preference is to do it through SSH. So if you want to do updates, if you scroll down this dock, it actually tells you this is app update, disk upgrade. That's how you normally do uh, updates. So we're going to do this right here apt update boom so that's going to go out there and it's going to get all my packages that need to be upgradable so one of the things is is um uh this particular instance has a uh has the the free sources and the enterprise sources are turned off so if you have an enterprise version it's a slightly different operation that's just the paid subscription versus the non-paid subscriptions so this is the the non-paid uh, no subscription version. So now we're going to do this apt dist upgrade. And we're going to let that go. You want to go ahead and say yes. Boom. Now, while that's going, let's go back over here. You'll notice it says 6.4 dash 13. So when this is all done, I'll refresh this page and I'll have something different. So we'll be right back. Okay, so now we have that upgraded. So like I said, here is our in-place upgrade checklist. Upgrade to the latest version of Proxmox VE 6.4. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just refresh this page and we're gonna be all updated. See, there we go. Okay, so we got that done. Uh, upgrading Ceph. So I don't actually have Ceph installed on here, so this should be no problem. Uh, if it's co-installed with the backup server, there's an upgrade for that too. Um, accessing nodes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's go down here to this this right here, PVE upgrade. So this command 
is going to let us check our status. All right. One warning, zero failures, three skips, 18 pass. So let's take a look at that warning. Warning, Ceph credentials will be moved from blah, 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 blah. Okay. So that's not a big deal. All that is right there is I go in my storage. I actually have one of these guys right here is a Ceph storage mount. Um, that just has some backups on it. So if I have to redo that, it's not a big deal. So, all right. So now that we've done that, I want to go down here and take a look at all this other stuff. You can go through it, but honestly, we did this already. And now we're going to end up doing this guy right here. Okay. So scroll down here. And first of all, let me just screw this up a little. So et cetera, Etsy app source list. Let's just go ahead and take a look at what that actually is right now. Okay. So we're just going to go nano that. Let me get this over here where you guys can probably see it a little better. Okay. So here it is. So what you want to know here, what you want to take note of here is see that this download. So the no subscription, the main. So these first, all these, these are the repos where Roxmox gets their updates. The first one is a Proxmox Debian. The second one is just straight up Debian. The third one is also a Debian one. And then the fourth one is the security updates for Debian. So, and now if you notice, they're all Buster. Now we are end up, we are switching this from Buster to Bullseye. So hit the control X and we go ahead and we put this command in here, copy it. And so take a look at this. So we're going to take Buster and then we're going to, updates and we're gonna change it all to bullseye. So paste that baby in there, boom. And then we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna look at this again. So now you see all those where it said Buster have been changed to bullseye. And you could manually type in the, the change in that Buster to bullseye. So that command just does it all for you, a nice easy peasy thing. So uh, I like to go in here and check, make sure it all happened right. Now also, if you have the enterprise version, you're gonna have some other repos involved there. So let me just show you that. Uh, okay, so here it is. Here's the PV enterprise list. And as you can see that I have it commented out. Um, if you are running with the enterprise subscription version, that buster is going to change to a bullseye also. Bullseye also going to need to be changed. Okay. So back here. So you can read this. Here it is. Um, oh, and here's the, the, the changing it for the enterprise. Um, and then, so in my particular case, I, I don't have this, this set up this way. So, if you go to, let me just scroll that up. So if I go to this PV install remote distos where they have their um, no, no subscription one, I have that in my regular one. So let me just show you that. So in mine, I just have the enterprise one there and I don't have that the install repo. Okay. And then the Ceft, Ceft one. Um, so we can, we can put this in here and I'll put this in here. So now if you look, you're going to see that Ceft. Okay. So now let's just take a look at that Ceft, um, file. Nano that guy. Ooh, 
Man, oh, that guy. And so here we have the Ceph stuff. We're going to go ahead and do this apt update again, right? All is updated. Now we do the dist update, upgrade. Here's where all the magic happens. Okay, and that appears to have finished. Let's just take a look if the web interface works. Oh, look at there, 7.1.6 or dash six. Okay, virtual machines and everything. Okay, so let's just take this for example and click on one of these guys, go to our hardware, and let's just look and see what we have. TPM. That's the exciting part for me, uh, being able to create machines with TPMs. TPM. And uh, should we do a reboot? I think we probably, you probably should do a reboot before you go and do it. Click on your node and then click on reboot and click on yes. And that is going to reboot our Proxmox. So you'll see that my connection to it on my terminal got disconnected. And so we'll let this reboot. Okay. So we rebooted this guy. It's up and running, by the way. Uh, still says 610. Let's go ahead and start these guys. Start and start. And let's go look at our storage that the S Samba SIF storage still connected, still looking good. So that's not a problem. Everything appears to be golden. We hit refresh um, for updates on your packages. And so you'll see here, it's hitting the bullseye security, uh, both the Debian and the Proxmox stuff. And then it's done with that. And you'll see there's no updates. So it's up and running. All right, so there you have it. It's that easy to get that Proxmox 6.4 upgraded to 7.1. And like I said, there are great new features in 7.1. So it is worthwhile upgrade. Always try to keep your stuff up to date as best as possible that for all the security updates and everything like that. So remember that when you're running a Proxmox machine or really anything. So update, update, update. It, it'll keep you safe or at least safer. So I'm Kevin Stevenson with GiveMeTheGeek.com. If you got something out of this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe. I'd love to, to hear your feedback on the videos. Tell me what you need to do. Tell me what problems you had. Maybe we can talk about it. I have a membership to my channel now, which is uh, running at $1.99 for the subscription. So you can go in there. That'll give you access to Discord where we can talk more in depth about some of the issues and have discussions about these things. So uh, I recommend that if you want to have a conversation, if you're having issues, and you, you want a little bit more interactivity, we can do that in Discord for the members. Now, I can off, offer you a little bit of responses in the comments, but it's not real super great to be able to uh, troubleshoot stuff. That's one of the reasons why I created the membership, so that the members can come in there and have a discussion with amongst themselves and with me on the issues you're having on my videos or maybe having or advice. So consider that. I'll see you next time.